Welcome back to the Super Sons podcast. Yes, that's yes. totally what it's called. Yes, I, I am Paul Christian, your new host. And I'm Eric Jackson, your new co-host. Yes, you have two new hosts. <laughs> I mean, the producers of this show are looking for new a new talent. The old talent, as I understand, is now in Arkham Asylum because they've been killing people. Yeah, there was something that wasn't very good. They, they only brushed... I was rushed in here as a last-second replacement, so I only know half of the story. But apparently, I mean, I can let you know this. At least, if, I, if you do pick me as the new co- permanent co-host, I will not murder a- any more people. I mean... I, or a- any people, I mean. I can't promise it. But I won't do it unless it's completely justified. Yeah, it, it'll be it'll be a justified super crime. Oh yeah. So normally we would be doing the weekly. Uh, we're from the co- the podcast called Agents of Comic Book, where mm-hmm. we would normally review a comic book story and then talk about the movie or show yep. that it's based on right after that. And uh, we do that weekly, but we're trying to double down. Oh yeah, I got to get that synergy. Yeah. When the producers came to us to do this, I really wanted to just take over. I'm, I want to really eventually take over every podcast. Oh yeah, we got to brand it. We got to brand. That's right. <laughs> this is this is the new. Super Sons, which is also Agents of Comic Book. Oh, yes. Agents of Super Sons. The Agents of the Super Sons. <laughs> we got to figure out what Super Sons stands for now, too, if that's going to become an acronym. Very true. But, I mean, so we're going to be taking over. I assume this will be a very long-running podcast. I'm trying to get at least 100 episodes so we can get that syndication money. Oh, yeah, you gotta. Um, get that Seinfeld money. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's what I, that's what my hope is. So this will be the first episode of many. We're going to be covering the Doom Patrol pilot, the yes. first episode of the Doom Patrol show on the DC Universe, mm-hmm. which the DC Universe has had three shows so far, and this one is definitely the best one. Yeah, yeah. Wait, like, oh, like three original. Three original yeah, shows. Yeah. yeah, they've got all the old ones still. Yeah, because they have this show. They have Titans, uh, S- Titans which uh, is a show. Yeah, we we're not going to say anything good or bad about it, except that it is it does exist. That's one thing that it certainly does. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Swamp Thing, which also that show does not exist. <laughs> yeah, we never finished that. We I think we're like halfway. I don't. Through. Well, you know what else? DC Universe didn't. Finish it <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, that show got canceled immediately. I can't believe that. But we're we're here to cover the first episode of Doom Patrol, the most successful show on the on the DC Universe. Yeah, um, you're gonna make that that take. I mean, it's it just is. I mean, it's the most popular. I think critically, yeah, but like, is it? Like as uh, far as like views go, yeah, because I, I could no, I could it, see it, it I could see Titans is. being popular no, with Doom like pa- younger people. Well, D- Titans does okay, but no, this show is definitely its flagship so far. I, I would imagine, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna kind of introduce you guys to the the Doom Patrol. As I understand, this podcast is supposed to be a way to introduce new people into pe- maybe people who don't read comics or maybe who haven't seen the show yet. Okay, uh, try to bring people in, introduce uh, what's going on. That's how I understand it anyway. But then again, the people who used to run this are murderers, so I don't know if we should necessarily <laughs> do it their way. Yeah, I don't know. But then again, OJ Simpson now gives fantasy football advice on his Twitter, so I mean, who that's knows? very true. He's got a lot of followers. <laughs> So maybe these uh, this Dan and Jake will be back, but I, I mean I hope not. I don't I don't want to listen to murderers talk about my comic. I books. mean we don't I mean we don't know the whole story, so let's not rush to judgment. Here. If they're murderers, we have jobs. This is true. <laughs> they're murderers. <laughs> Uh, we're here to talk about the first episode of Doom Patrol. Uh, the Doom Patrol is kind of an interesting property because it is in the DC universe, but it's not super tied in. Yeah, I had never heard of it before this show. Yeah, it's very much on the fringes of the DC universe, and that's how it is in the comics, too. Uh, it's a little bit like the X-Men, where we have like kind of a mysterious man in a wheelchair recruiting yeah. these super-powered individuals uh, Although, who all live at his mansion. We can officially say that Doom Patrol came first. Yeah, I did it? Did we look that up? Yes. Okay. Originally, yeah. like, I, although the, I, the Golden Age Doom Patrol. Honestly, yeah. I can't say what the original idea or like uh, concept of Chief was. I don't know if he's always been in a wheelchair. If that was Grant Morrison, I, I, no, I think he has always been in the wheelchair. Okay. If I recall correctly, but I mean, I'm not a Doom Patrol expert. I've just read the Grant Morrison, the Morrison run. run yeah. yeah, I've read the Grant Morrison run. You're reading it as we speak. Yeah, I'm on volume two. Yeah, so we're both big uh, big fans of the of the comic that this is based on. Oh, yeah. At least well, mostly based on. I mean, I'll read anything, Grant Morrison. So once I heard that Doom, the Doom Patrol show was largely based off of the Morrison run, I was all on board. Right. So just to introduce you guys to the characters a little bit, uh, that like I said, we have a mysterious man in the wheelchair. His name is the Chief. Yep. Uh, he is. We don't know a lot about him in just the first episode. But yeah. He's basically a, a mysterious man with some kind of power and wealth who, for some reason, wants to recruit and create these super powered, like in in Cliff's case, in the Robot Man's case, create yeah, yeah. like you know super powered people yeah not really to fight crime it's uncertain why he's doing it at this point but we'll find out more as the show goes on yeah i mean as far as we really gather he's just doing as like a humanitarian thing (laughs) like yeah i mean i guess maybe to just help them or give them a place to stay he literally said like he was just trying to give him a soft place to land like for a second okay so it's kind of like the x-men where it's like you can be safe here yeah yeah so it's a little bit like that 
Um, so the team that he has so far, they've kind of been on the team since the 50s and just living at this mansion. Uh, we have the negative man who is a former pilot. Uh, in the 50s, his name is Larry Trainer. Larry Trainer, and uh, he was a test pilot, and uh, went had a mission that was given to him to fly kind of into the the stratosphere. Yeah, it's part of the Mercury space program, right? And uh, as he was high, like high above the horizon, like uh, in the above the above atmosphere. the atmosphere is what I meant to say. Yeah, uh, he sees this kind of like glowing blue electric cloud almost yeah and flies through it and his whole body kind of gets like taken over by this electric cloud Mm -hmm. sending the the plane spinning down to the ground as you know his family gathers around yeah uh (laughs) watches in horror right and uh, his wife shows up and even even and we do find out he's also like cheating on his wife later (laughs) oh yeah yeah because he uh he is uh, secretly gay as well and his uh his partner is like in the military with him yeah he comes running up he's not no he's his uh mechanic yeah, oh, but he does work with him, right? I'm, yeah, he's, well, he's his like. Oh, he's, so he's not a pilot too. I thought he was a pilot. Um, he might be a pilot. He's definitely not on the same tier as no, Larry. He, yeah, because Larry Trainer is described as like the best pilot. Like he's like a like a star. Yeah, you know, like uh, the the narrator calls him like an American god. So yeah, the first time uh, his boyfriend John Bowers is introduced is when he's looking at the plane and he asks him how his how his plane's looking and he gives him all the specs and stuff. So I'm pretty sure he's like his mechanic. Yeah, so that's probably how they met. Is he's working on the plane and then he flies yeah. it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yeah, because he's the one who first shows up as the pl- so Larry's plane comes crashing down to yeah, the ground yeah. and he's the first one who shows up like holy shit like what's going on yeah as larry walks out of the wreckage like on fire with his face burnt off right he just like walks through like a burning man like oh god yeah but he's alive it's horrifying so yeah they they put out the fire he is alive so that's his or and then we kind of just get a mysterious like narration of but he wasn't alone yeah yeah. the negative man he has like a spirit living inside him almost the the negative yeah it's like an alien kind of yeah and uh it can like fly out of his body and like attack things. But yeah, then it, as soon as it flies out of his body, he becomes like unconscious. Yeah, he like can. It's pretty much giving him life. It's his life source. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that's what they mean when the narrator says like he had a stowaway because now Larry has to live with this like other entity inside him. But that's yep. also how he gets his powers and why yeah, he, and it gives him eternal life. Basically. Exactly. Because so, like we mentioned, the show takes place in 2019, but Larry is from like the 50s. Yeah, so he's been alive this whole time. Yep. But he, since this accident, he lives like in, wrapped up in bandages. Yeah, he basically looks like the Invisible Man. Yeah, exactly. He looks just like the Invisible yeah, Man. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and he just has these goggles on top, which, which are pretty cool. I gotta say, so uh, it's played by Matt Bomber, who is, I I haven't really seen him much. I was talking to my yeah. sister introducing her to this show, and apparently he was the lead in Magic Mike. Oh, yeah? Oh, so, cool. like, I, I think it's really funny that they casted Matt Bomber, who's, like, I guess regarded as, like, one of the hottest, like, male actors in Hollywood right now, and they just cover him up like a mummy. Oh, Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, they've got the flashback scenes and, like, some yeah, scenes no, he, where, like... He, you do see a lot of him as yeah, himself, too. Oh, yeah, you yeah. do. But, if, like, it, the majority is definitely in his, like, mummy suit. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's same with uh, Brendan Fraser. It's like you get this big-name actor and then yep. you, like, never see him. Yeah, and I gotta say, if you haven't seen the show yet, husky Brendan Fraser is something you never knew you needed, but you, <laughs> you do need it. Uh, but, yeah, so so that's Larry Trainer, the negative man. And then uh, we also have uh, part of the original team that's already in the, the mansion is... Uh, Rita Farr. Yep. Uh, but yeah, Rita Farr was an actress who was uh, filming this movie in the Congo uh, way back when. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of an interesting parallel because she gets her powers like right before she she's like filming the scene and there's this man doing the camera work who yeah. only has one arm. And she's like, get that man away from me. Like, I'm disgusted. Like, it's distracting me. Yeah. And then immediately after that happens, she's like walks out onto the dock and like falls through into the water. Where it's unclear exactly what happens to her. Yeah, they don't really explain it. But it looks like a little, like, fairy from, like, Zelda, like, flies into her mouth. Yeah. Th- that's pretty much the best way I can describe she, it. She, like, she's trying to, like, uh, grasp the rocks and, like, one falls and then out of, like, the hole in the wall, like, comes that thing, which th- they never really explain it. Right. But then as she emerges, she feels fine at first. Yeah. She comes out of the water, but then all of a sudden her face just like literally starts to melt. Yeah, everyone's like looking at her in shock, and she's like, what are you all staring at? And they hand her a mirror, and then her face is like melting. Right. So Rita Farr, what her powers are is she's known as... She's Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> well, she's Mr. Fantastic if he had no control over yeah, his own body. if he didn't know how it worked. <laughs> yeah. 
because she's called the Elastic Woman or like the Elastic Girl. <laughs> and, the Incredibles. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, but her thing, like she has a lot in this show at least. She has a lot less control over her powers. Yeah, whenever she gets stressed out or anxious, like she just starts melting. Yeah, it seems like she pretty much at all times has to just concentrate on looking like a human. Yep. But if she does, if she loses her concentration or her confidence in that, she'll yeah. just start melting into a blob. And so that's kind of the parallel is like she was disgusted at that man, but then all of a sudden like everyone's disgusted at her. And yep. It's like now she knows what it feels like yeah that's some instant karma Mm -hmm. and then we have um as well uh, this is kind of where the show starts as we get our newest member of the team which is uh cliff steel yep uh known in the comics as the robot man yep he's a race car driver who gets into a a crash and uh this is what we see at first yeah he gets he crashes during a race right and then so the the, burning car like knocks him out and then he wakes up and Chief is just over his head, just like, welcome, like, I'm going to build you a body. Yeah, it's a really cool sequence, because it's a POV shot of of his, like, view as, like, looking through the robot visor. Right, like like a very, like, rudimentary, basic... <laughs> yeah, and it, it literally shows uh, Chief, and, okay, it, it, I, we didn't mention it, but Chief is played by... Um, Timothy, Timothy Dalton. Dalton who's, who's, like, a legendary actor. Absolute played legend. James Bond, yeah. J- and his character in Hot Fuzz was the best. <laughs> and, like, so, at his ca- he was just the perfect casting for Chief. And then, like, there's even a scene where... It, He's like looking at Chief working on him, and he's watching a video that is like how to weld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. So that comes up in the comics too, where it's like he does kind of have a clunky body compared to what other characters in the DC universe have built. <laughs> yeah, because in the second episode they introduce Cyborg, right? And, then, and so like him compared to Cyborg is like it's like night and day. It's like yeah. caveman. It's like can I at least have like another set of hands <laughs> right? for grabbing delicate things? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, so Chief builds him this body, and he slowly kind of gets control over it. We kind of spend a lot of the episode as he kind of just learns how to use the body and like go upstairs yeah he's rehabbing right exactly it's like physical rehab just Mm -hmm. kind of learning how to use the body and R- Rita Farr even initially gives him the shock of it, <laughs> like, almost oh, like yeah. a really dick move moment. <laughs> it, it's it's really sadistic. <laughs> she she like she's like, hey, listen, by the way, you're a robot man, and holds up like a mirror to his head. And yeah, he's, and you just see his head shake in horror, and he's like, oh god, he's like, what is that? What? Is-? And then she just like instantly flips his switch off. It's just like <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah, it's amazing. And then and then he, she just turns him off. And it's like, oh goodbye. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Now I'll think about that. Yeah, chew on that. <laughs> And um, so he's kind of getting used to his whole body, and then that's where we meet the final member of the crew, because uh, she had run away from the house. Cause well, before that, he ends up asking the chief, he wants to go back and like connect with his wife and his daughter, oh, right. and then the chief's like, oh, well, you've made a lot of progress, I'm really proud of you, but I think you're finally ready to hear this. Yeah, so Chief tells him, like, listen, you weren't in a car crash during the race. You won the race. Yeah. But then immediately after that, like, you kind of tried to reconcile with your wife. Mm -hmm. And as you were driving, you... With her and your daughter. Yeah, you, like, hit this semi, which took the the front at the top off your car and killed both of you. Yep. And he's like, oh, well, that's that sucks. Yeah. And he just kind of, like, screams in terror. Yeah, so then he literally, like, stands and stares out a window for, like, 20 years. And then... Yeah, because that was back in 1995. And then the show takes place in 2019. Yeah, it's present day. So that's kind of where the plot takes off and we uh we kind of see uh, we get our first introduction of uh jane as well yep um crazy jane crazy jane she had she, her abilities are she has uh, she has multiple personality disorder 64 64 different personalities but yep. not only that but each one of her personalities has its own superpower it's so cool which is a really cool she is she's kind of like legion in marvel comics so, if you know who was that, that a morrison creation yeah yeah and he created jane was that around the time of sybil so I, I feel don't like know. maybe because when Sybil came out, like that, that was like a big rave in like popular culture. That's like true, the whole but, the whole idea of of multiple personalities. But I do also think that Legion existed at this point. Oh, too, true. And, and yeah. That's straight up who Legion is. Too. Oh, it's very. So true. it's also probably a little bit of a play on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jane has sixty four personalities. You never really meet all of them. You there's a lot of them that come back more than others. Yeah, yeah. Some of them like don't come out at all. Yeah, there are like there's a handful that are like the the primary, the core. But it's cool because it's not just that each personality has its own power like as she changes personalities like her whole look changes yeah there's a there's a really cool effect that they do where it's kind of just like her like skin kind of like ripples it's like a blue like ripple that like goes a ripple down in reality kinda. Yeah, yeah yeah like her reality like tears for a second and then like like um yeah like um she'll be wearing like different clothes or have tattoos yeah and, sylvia's like, got like a really cool chest tattoo yes yeah, and like yeah, uh, the first really one dark we meet is sylvia and her voice like sounds like a witch it's like a demon like yeah. witch voice and she has she wears like these like robes it looks really yeah, cool she's awesome and then like like i said like her clothes and stuff will change when she changes personalities yep her hair 
makeup eyes. Yeah, because we see her, like, she meets Cliff for the first time, and she turns into Hammerhead, which is one we see a lot. Yeah. And uh, she kind of goes up and, like, oh, what are you, like, a toy, little toy man playing yeah, with yeah. toy? Because he's, like, building a train set. Yeah. He's been building a train set well, for, like, no, 15 it's, it's years. No, it's a race car set. Oh, sure, whatever. Same thing. It looks like a fancy train set. <laughs> yeah, and so he's been doing that for, like, 20 years. <laughs> or, like, 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks it looks legit. I don't know if it looks like he's been working on it for 25 years. I mean, again, though, I don't know. He had to have been getting help from Larry because I don't know how oh, he's, he's like. He's got those sausage hands. Yeah. How is he going to use those little car pieces <laughs> and, and like all the little trees? I smashed another one. <laughs> God. And then the final character who we should probably introduce everyone to as well as the antagonist of the oh, show. Oh, right. Yeah. It starts um, out with him. Yeah. The show even opens with it, too. But this the antagonist of the show is a really cool character known as Mr. Nobody, who is also a Grant Morrison creation. Yep. Um, Played he, by Alan Tudyk, who is great. Who is in everything these days. And I love it. He's, yeah. he's awesome. He's so awesome, so awesome in the show. And he's he's actually uh, the sidetrack a little bit. He's going to be playing the Joker in that Harley yeah, Quinn cartoon. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. That'll be cool. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be cool to see. Um, yeah, Mr. Nobody is, he is also from the 40s. He was uh, working with the Nazis on this. He like kind of tracked down this Nazi doctor who it's, fled to Argentina. It's basically Mengele. Yeah. It's, it, it's like it's, uh, it's like if Mengele fled to Argentina after the war, yeah. Well, he did flee to Argentina. That, oh, is that that's is that where that they true? found him? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I didn't yeah, know that. that was actually true. Like they found his body, like washed up. On so yeah, a beach. he's definitely based on him then. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he he. There's this kind of. It looks a lot like Doctor Manhattan's thing in yeah, Watchmen. It reminds me a lot of it. And uh, he kind of steps into it. it's like it's in the comics too. They kind of describe it as like a sensory deprivation chamber. Mm -hmm. It's like he gets in there and all he can see is white all around him. Yep. And uh, the machine goes off and he keeps repeating this phrase. Uh, the mind is the limit. The mm -hmm. mind is the limit. And as he's repeating this and, like, all he sees is whiteness, he kind of goes insane. Yeah. And all of his reality and, like, his whole body breaks and his whole head and body, like, comes apart. Yeah, like, shatters like, into pieces. Like a puzzle piece almost. Yeah, it looks awesome. And so, like, from that point on, he is... I would only, like if you know who Doctor Manhattan is, that's a very good comparison to understand like what his powers are. Oh yeah, he's basically like he, a he can just think reality and it will he can, he can create it. Yeah, because technically in the comics they describe him as existing in the white space between the yeah. panels of the comics. Well, that comes up. It's the same in the show. It does too. come up in the show yeah. too. Yeah, actually, which is a really cool idea. Yeah, and uh, so he is like like a god within these panels because he can move behind everything behind reality itself. Yeah, which and it's really cool. It's cool because they they kind of do the, they do the whole fourth wall thing with his character because he kind of narrates a lot of episodes he is the narrator of the show yeah, yeah there's a couple episodes where he doesn't show up at all but but if there's ever a narrator it's the him. bulk yeah the yeah. bulk of it's him and he narrates this episode too as e yep. even if you don't realize it at first it's him yeah it is so the first plot point we get that really drives uh this whole the whole plot of this first pilot episode forward is chief leaves to go on some mission that we don't really know where he's going mm -hmm. but he, he does this occasionally like he leaves the the mansion and he's like do do your best stay out of trouble yeah yeah and uh, everyone is kind of just doing their own thing they don't really want to leave but then jane like kind of clears out all of steals larry's bus yeah larry yeah. like lives in that bus yeah he's got a bus that he like grows a bunch of plants in yeah she steals it paints it black yeah and... like probably throws out all of his plants i would imagine yeah <laughs> and she's like listen losers we, we're gonna go into town we're gonna cause <laughs> trouble like we, we gotta do something we gotta have a life yep and so they all kind of escape to town and play hooky. And uh, this is where the trouble begins because they all kind of go off to do their separate things. Larry yeah. goes to the bar to have a beer. Uh, Rita goes to the bar to have a beer, but a different one. Yeah. <laughs> and then Larry and... No, she goes to get a milkshake. Oh, yeah, she does. So yeah. She, goes to, like, she literally goes... To, she's so... Ch Rita Farr's character. She's, she's very awesome, old fashioned. But she's like... she's a ch She basically plays the role of the cheesy, like, 50s actress. Right. Like, like there's a scene where Larry... Or, uh, uh, Cliff Robot Man's like asking her like what she if what she did and he's like oh what, were you in movies and she like pauses and looks away she's like pictures I was in the pictures <laughs> it's like oh god and there's a funny part too where Jane is like impersonating her voice and she's like fuck off Rita <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, hello Hammerhead no nice to see you oh that's great but and then uh, Cliff and Jane go into the the park in town to go smoke a joint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and Jane tries to see if she can get him high, but it doesn't work. Yeah, she tries shotgunning it, <laughs> but um. Rita runs into who must be like a super fan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this part was a little ridiculous, but like, okay, so the way I, the only plausible way I can see it is if. Well, because Rita runs into a, a person working at this ice cream shop yeah. who runs into her and she's like, oh my God, you're Rita Farr. Like, I'm your biggest fan. Well, no, she's like, you look a lot like Rita Farr. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't think the, it's her. But because she's... if it was her, she'd be like dead by now. Right. Yeah. So she's like, oh, well, you look just like her. I love Rita Farr. <laughs> you look like the the freaking invincible life form Rita Farr <laughs> yeah, that right. doesn't age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. That's me. 
<laughs> but yeah, so she and she just kind of starts gushing about this actress from the fifties, which yeah. is very like that's a hell of a coincidence. But whatever. Yeah, like like I was saying, the only way I could see it is if she was like Marilyn Monroe, famous in this universe, which is plausible. I mean, in the comics, her name gets name dropped enough where it's like you have to assume that she's incredibly famous. Okay, because like if someone who wa- like walked into your place who looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you'd be like, oh my god, yeah, or maybe yeah. a more, or even if they looked like Marilyn Monroe. Well, and she yeah. she walked into a fifties diner, so like oh, true. if us uh, if someone dressed up as Marilyn Monroe walked into a 50s diner someone would be like oh you look just like yeah her. exactly yeah um and then Larry goes in to get a beer except immediately right when he gets his beer trouble starts happening yeah so Rita's sitting with this like super fan like this one who said that she's watched all of her pictures and yeah. she's like you want to hear something real saucy oh yeah my dad told me like Rita Farr after she became like she because w- Rita in real life like went off the face yeah of the she just disappeared yeah so and she's like my dad doesn't know what happened but she but he heard that she went to go do porn well that she She's like, oh, yeah, he had duffel bags of the stuff. Yeah, which and, we don't – I mean, I guess we don't know for sure, but, I mean, she doesn't talk about it ever for, like, the rest of the season, but maybe that's something that ha- – if he had duffel bags I, I would imagine – probably just him rambling th- and – because it doesn't come up again. No, it, so honestly, I don't that was probably just like her either misremembering or her dad was just, just like get telling her being a, she, yeah, an asshole. Yes, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so but either way, it, it gets her really embarrassed. Yeah, and, and her whole like face starts melting. Yeah, because she can't hold herself together anymore because she doesn't even go out that much. Yeah. Um. So immediately, uh, she like she tries to get out of yeah. the restaurant in time, but she like falls over and becomes like literally a giant blob and just like <laughs> so it's such a big blob and so powerful that it like busts open the walls of the whole ice cream shop yeah and everyone is like running in terror <laughs> yeah like this is this is this causes like pandemonium immediately yep. and while this is all happening jane and robot man are just kind of sitting on the bench and robot man is still like super depressed because he thinks that his whole family is dead mm. and jane is like well, how do you know that for sure? Like, you don't know for sure your family's dead. You don't, like, the chief told you that, but have you even looked into it? Yeah. And he's like, I just know it. Like, they're dead. And she's like, listen, dude, like, just Google it. Like, you're famous. Everyone knows this story. Like, yep. your, your daughter survived. Like, yep. I, even I know this. <laughs> and then he ends up grabbing her phone and, like, crushing it in his hand. <laughs> yeah, because she, she's trying to look her up, be like, look, I can even tell you where she lives. And, yeah. ro- and Robot Man grabs her phone and crushes it in his, in his fist. <laughs> she's and, like, asshole. Yeah, like, that phone costs, uh, like, eleven hundred dollars like a thousand dollars yeah that's a new iphone yeah you know how much those cost god (laughs) and so as this happens like the police walk up to them and they're like hey are you guys smoking a joint because she's also like right up in him and it looks like they're gonna fight too. yeah and they're probably like that looks like a robot man yeah yeah. let's at least see what's happening here and uh, they go up and jane immediately turns into hammerhead and she's like, listen, you pig. Like, yeah. I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. Just starts calling them pigs and fighting yeah. them or wanting to fight them. Yeah. And so as this is going on, though, like the town starts on fire because Rita is causing like pandemonium. Yeah, like fucking energy or power lines are like falling down. Yeah. So this is Chief's like worst nightmare. Yeah. Like. The town is scattering and fleeing. Yeah. And as this is happening, Larry is losing control of the negative spirit. Because, yeah. Well, what the reason why he's losing control is the negative spirit kind of leaves his body and kind of goes and saves a couple lives. Actually. Yeah, he does. So that's probably why the spirit wanted out of his body. Yeah. Like, Listen, we got to do he something. He knew trouble was happening. Yes, yeah. Because the negative spirit kind of, there's a part where a power line falls on a girl's car, like a woman's car. And then like, it's about to like electric electrify her, but then he kind of soaks up the electricity. Yeah. He flies her. into it and soaks it up. Yeah. So the, the, the negative spirits trying his best to contain everything. Mm-hmm. Like he's really the only one. Yeah. I don't know if helpful. we've made that explicit, but like, it's like, it has a consciousness. Like, Oh no, we did. Yeah. We talked about it. Yeah. Well, I, I know we talked about it, like it oh, but it, and, like, but it, yeah, it's, it's like yeah, it, it's like the Hulk. It's like the Hulk is its own person. Yeah, like it doesn't talk, but like it definitely can communicate and it, it understands. It can like, write things. Yeah, it, true. It, it, yeah, it just can't speak. Yeah, words, it doesn't yeah. have a mouth. Yeah. Um, but then Sarita's kind of just rolling through the streets as this blob. Yeah. And there's even a funny part where this bus comes crashing in out of nowhere. And like, I don't know what this woman was trying to do. She, if she was trying to flee, she did a horrible job. Well, she's she was... not even fleeing. She like comes into the town because she crashes before she even gets to the part where the blob is. Yeah, true. So she crashed. Like what, the reason she crashed had to be completely unrelated to what's happening. Yeah, because she came out of nowhere. Like, and that's there, just a drunk driver. There was no obstruction. <laughs> she hit, she ran into a parked yeah, car. She's just driving a bunch of kids like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it was the blob. That's why I crashed. <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> I'm definitely sober. <laughs> and so she gets out. She's like, holy shit. Like, these kids are going to die. Like, this yeah. blob is coming. Yep. And so that's when Larry steps up. No, Robot Man. 
Or sorry, yeah, the robot man steps up, and Jane like is almost about to do something. She turns into one of her oh, personalities, yeah. which we we don't see a lot of yet. But yeah. it's like she starts to grow in size, like almost like yeah, triple like, her size, yeah, like twenty feet. Yeah, and then she has like instead of her head, it's like a glowing sun. Yeah, it's a sun. Yeah, it, it's it's amazing. Like some yeah. of her personalities like legitimately change her into another person. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's really cool. That's why her powers are like. That's why, that's why she's a fan favorite in the show already. Yep. Um, but then or, uh, robot man is like, no, 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 no. Like that's not the place for this like we can't yeah. be blowing shit up like i got this what he does is he like lifts the gravel on the road or like whatever you call that the cement yeah and like uses it to block rita's path and then until she can't roll around anymore yeah and like and it as it's like about to topple over a piece or like a flap falls down and it's like rita's eyes and mouth and she's like i want to go home oh it's disgusting oh, it's so gross <laughs> i want to go home <laughs> yeah and so this whole sequence is kind of just like a really good way for us to see all of their powers and like what they can do and like yep. what happens when things go wrong yeah. So it's a really cool introduction. And so they all kind of get back, and Chief's like, where were you? Yeah, like, what did you do to the town? <laughs> Holy shit. Like, and he, he even tells him, like, listen, like, th- there's people who, like, are tracking me. Like, yeah, now that yeah. they, they've seen you out here, like, they're coming to this house. Like, we have to leave. Mm-hmm. And so he's, like, literally, like, they're about to pack up and leave Doom Manor. Like, I think that's what they call it, Doom Manor. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Th- I mean, Mr. Nobody calls it that when he narrates it. Yeah. And um, they- they're all about to leave, like, town forever and find someplace else to live. When um, the town, like, you can kind of see it, like, they're like, the town's about to be attacked, like, Mr. Nobody's coming. Yeah, so Cliff is like, well, we can't just abandon the town. Yeah, like, we're the ones who fucked him over, like, we gotta go help him. If Mr. Nobody's gonna attack the town to get to us, like, we gotta do something, then. Yeah. Like, that's our job. Yeah, and Rita is like, well, I'm not gonna do that. And Larry, of course, didn't want to do that. And yeah, because they're they're not heroes. Like, yeah. they they've lived in this house since the fifties, doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, they've literally been sitting. Like, what do they say? Rita has her knitting, and Larry has horticulture. So they've been playing with plants and knitting for sixty. Yeah, years. Yeah, she must have like a whole house filled with things she's knitted. <laughs> there is so much yarn. She's in probably that house. the best knitter on planet Earth. Yeah, she's god tier. <laughs> Cliff and Jane kind of like eventually like come to the conclusion like we got to save the town. Like, well, no, Jane it, ends up leaving initially. Oh, it's so it's Jane literally like yeah. ro- it's Robot Man like walking down the street to the town by himself. While Jane, oh, that's right. Jane's driving the bus with Chief Larry and Rita, and then Jane, as she's driving, is like, "Well, listen, I don't, ca- I don't give a shit about the townspeople, but it's kind of fucked up. We left Cliff alone, right? So, so they go back just to help out Cliff, whereas Cliff is the only one kind of trying to be a hero. Yeah, he yeah. Still, probably still feels shitty about everything. Yeah. Um, and then that's kind of where. We're kind of in, like, the penultimate part of the episode here, because that's when we get, like, they kind of show up. They all kind of go wa- walking up to the town where there's just this single donkey there. Yeah. And uh, the donkey just kind of walks up, and he kind of, like, farts this green mist yeah. into the air. And you're like, what is happening? <laughs> and it literally, like, the green mist turns into the words, the mind is the limit. And you're like, what? Okay. And then, like, uh, Chief is, like, left alone in the bus. And yeah. he's just sitting there. And he's, he's just like, chilling. And he, like, can sense it behind him. And we see our first look of Mr. Nobody, like, in his form yeah and it's a really cool adaptation of like how mr nobody looks in the comic it's pretty too. close because yeah because he has he's like a black silhouette like not fully filled in but then yeah. also like one part of his face is normal still yeah like he's got one good eye and then his mouth is there but yeah. then like it's a but there's it's a, a really lot, cool of, lot of missing pieces and the rest is a silhouette right and so this is kind of where you you are also kind of figuring out like oh this is the narrator like this is the one talking the whole time yeah, even, yeah he's even talking to the audience as he's talking to chief yep and he's like listen like i'm about to fuck up these guys and it's all your fault and like literally the town starts to like snap into a new reality and everything starts funneling into like a nothingness yeah it's like a black hole yeah exactly a white or a white hole yeah and everything gets sucked in and then like that's kind of where we leave everything yeah and that's where we that's the cliffhanger that they want everyone to come back for yeah yeah and like the second episode opens up with what happens next right away yeah and and we're not going to cover the second episode yeah yeah. in uh in this episode that's going to be because like i said we're going to do probably hundreds of of this show i imagine thousands yeah because there's no way that we get replaced after this oh no way those guys are going away for life yeah if they're gonna hire two murderers that there's no way we're not taking over for good. i, <laughs> I would i would hope i want to cover every show that's being done too i don't i don't want a bunch of new crews to come in and do titans and do yeah. the cw shows i want to cover every single oh, yeah, one. we should do them so all. If, we, if we get replaced i'm gonna be extremely upset there's no <laughs> way we get replaced no that's not happening unless of course i murder someone <laughs> Maybe. That that won't happen. <laughs> it hasn't happened. Maybe, but uh, but yeah. So and I do kind of like the way the next episode opens up too. Like I said, we're not going to talk about it, but the next episode opens up with him being like, "All right, now that we got rid of all the fake fans, now yeah, let's yeah. do the show." Yeah, exactly. And he's like, "The only people left now are people who left their TV on yeah, and, and diehard Morrison yeah, fans." Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that line. <laughs> 
Um, and then we also, in the next episode, we'll get introduced to a character who wasn't even in this, but that's Cyborg. Oh, yeah. And he's, he's great in this. Because if you're listening to this just to get a taste of Doom Patrol, Cyborg is in this whole he's show. He's a major role. And he's he's pretty good in this show. It's I like, I've like i never been a huge Cyborg fan, but this is probably the best Cyborg story I've seen yeah, in this Yeah, it was a great show. Great take on Cyborg. Yeah. I loved it. But I highly recommend everyone watch this show because it's the best show on the CW. It's like, it's like legitimately no, good DC. TV. Or on the DC, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, like, legitimately good TV. Like, it's it like, matches up with, like, other shows on TV. It's been, like, my favorite show of the year. And, like, that it's probably, like, top ten favorite shows of all time, like, yeah, right now. Yeah, because this show was going on when the final season of Game of Thrones was on. And we were very upset about that yeah. show. So we were like, we need something new to watch, yeah, please. Exactly. And then this came around, and I was like, thank you. I was so happy. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so th- that'll be it for – normally uh, – we would cover like if if this were our own podcast, because uh, both of us come from a podcast called uh, Agents of Comic Book. Yep, uh, which is a weekly show where we talk about um, we, we review one comic book every week, and then we also talk about one adaptation based on well, that one same character. one run, not just one issue. Well, yeah, one uh, comic book arc, one yeah, story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll read one comic book story, and then after that, review one show or movie based on that same character. Mm-hmm. And we do that every week. You can find us uh, at Agents of Podcast on Twitter, or if you're trying to find the podcast itself, you can go to agentsofcomicbook.com, or we're also on any of your podcast apps as well. Yeah, the you search, search Agents of Comic Book, you'll find it. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Our picture is a cool eagle that looks like the DEO symbol from yeah. DC Comics. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Uh, but yeah, that'll bring us to the end of our uh, pilot episode of our Doom Patrol podcast. Yeah, I think it went well. Uh, well what should we call it? The the, the Doom Pod Troll? Doom Pod Troll. The Doom Honest, Pod Troll. That's not bad. That's a good, uh, that's that's a good name. Bad. That's off the cuff, too. Off the cuff, that's prime. Yep, so we're we're on fire right now. So we're primed <laughs> for a great second episode. The only thing that's going to stop us is if we were suddenly arrested for murder. Which oh, yeah. I don't think is going to... Yeah. I heard, I heard something knocking, and my cat went running and almost knocked everything over. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, no, I thought that was you. Oh, no. my God. Oh my no. god, they're kicking down the door! Not now! Eric, I'm taking you hostage! No, not oh, wait, again! They're here, they're here to kill us both, that's not gonna work. Oh, jeez. Oh, we're gonna be arrested. Uh, uh, I admit it, I killed a bunch of people. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs>